Hey friends, welcome to the channel. In today's video, we're going to be looking at how we can create the best CV for an IT person, a CV that can gain the attention of potential employers. Now, just a caveat, I'm not a human resource expert, neither am I an expert on CVs, but I'm going to be giving my opinion as someone who has looked for a job at some point, someone who's been in the industry for a bit of time, and someone who's also been involved in a recruitment process. One of the number one questions that I get on this channel and the emails that I come through is, I've completed my CCNA, I've completed my A+, but I cannot get a job on the market. And one of the first things that I always ask people to send me is their CV. And most of the times I find their CVs not containing sufficient information. So in this video, we're going to be breaking down what makes a good CV, especially for people in the IT industry. What sh should your CV contain and what should you not include in the CV? So I've taken the time to go online. And according to the experts, they say when you're dealing with a resume or CV, content is key, meaning it is less about the structure of your CV, even though the structure is very important, the formatting of the CV is equally important. But what is most important is the content of the CV and what that content says about you. Some experts have actually gone to say that your CV is your first point of contact between you and the potential employer. And that CV should be able to sell you or basically give someone a rough picture of the kind of person that you are. For some, they say that it should be simple and easy to read. But these are kind of like the basic information that you kind of get online when you search what is contained in a CV. So for me to basically illustrate this point and, and make it much more simpler, I went to look at the Tesla website. I want to understand what is contained on their site. Yes, they sell cars, but what information do they provide? And as you can see, that's going to be delivered in six to nine months. The second most important part is what is the range that the car goes on a single charge. And in this case, it's 547 kilometers. They included the top speed and they included the speed of 0 to 100 in 3.3 seconds. That is basically followed by the cost of the car. So that's 63,000. So if you notice on the Tesla site, they've basically put the key highlights. So the moment you get to the page, you get to find out the key information. And why am I taking the Tesla example? The reason being that if I want to buy a Tesla, I want to know the features. I want to know what is most important. I don't want to to have that information hidden behind. And one of the challenges that I've basically encountered with most of the CVs that I've basically gone through myself that get sent to me is the lack of information when one is applying for a particular position. My focus is more on an IT perspective. What information should be contained in your CV? What is it that the employer is trying to ask when they are looking for a candidate? And how can you take what has been described in the job description to help match your CV to the role? I'm not basically highlighting that you should paste keywords on a one-to-one -one basis, but by a rule of thumb, you should at least have 40% of what has been contained in the job description as something that is highlighted in your CV. And that's my standard, right? You might have your own opinion, but based on the the, 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 the CVs that I receive and people saying that they are struggling to get a job on the market, 90% of tend to lack this information. And this is one of the reasons why I've decided to make this video to basically then highlight what makes a good CV from an IT perspective. So what should you include in your CV? Number one, it must include your name and your address and how you can get located. That's basically a given. Number two, your CV should contain summarized information about you. And this is where you paint a picture of you as a candidate and why you are ideal for the role. It should include your skills and your certifications and then close off with your experience. More preferably, the most recent experience should be on the top, followed by you know other jobs that you've gotten in the industry. So what issues do I find in most CVs. Issue number one, nothing about IT in the CV. Now, this might sound surprising, but I cannot tell you how many times I've received a CV about someone saying that they've completed CCNA, they've completed A+, they have been applying for jobs, but they haven't been getting a response. And I'm going to show one on the screen. Now, if you look at the CV, you've got the professional summary, which is good, but it says nothing about IT. The person then goes ahead and mentioned about the degree that they got, the year that they got their degree, and what was their GPA. 
And that's subject for discussion. I'm not really worried about that. For me, the concerning part is the certifications. CCNA, MCSA, AWS, fantastic. But as I scroll through the rest of the CV, I don't find anything that mentions something about those qualifications. I don't see spanning tree. I don't see EIGRP. I don't see routing protocols. I don't see access lists. I don't see... There's nothing in contained in the CV in relation to their CCNA. There's nothing contained in the CV in relation to their MCSA or AWS. Now, if I'm receiving the CV as a recruiter, I don't know what you're capable of. I don't know whether you did Windows 2012 or Windows 2016 for MCSA. You have not told me anything about AWS and to what extent you have done AWS and what is it that you know about AWS. And that then becomes a challenge. When I'm looking at 100 CVs, there's a very high chance I'm going to ignore this one. The reason being that it says nothing about who you are as a person. Number two, it is hiding keywords or not being able to provide important information. Now, I'm not a great fan of trying to scheme the system and put keywords on a one-to-one -one basis. But there's also not denying the fact that when an employer puts a job on the market looking for people, they tend to give a description of the person that they're looking for and the technology that they want you to at least have some interaction or experience on. And this is a typical example. So this company is looking for a network engineer and operation of complex networks and security solutions, including Cisco, Palo Alto, Meraki. That's number one. We're just looking for keywords. And if you're going to be applying for this particular job, at bare minimum, your CV should contain the word Cisco in it because that's one of the key requirements that they're looking for, or at least Palo Alto. Okay, let's go. Good knowledge of routing and switching. Uh, you must have LAN, WAN, VPN, and network analysis tools. That's the second set of keywords. So your CV should at least detail that you've dealt with routing or switching at some point. The terms might be different, but if I'm trying to build a picture of who you are as a person versus what we're looking for, I should be able to say, okay, fine. This person has routing experience. They might not have switching experience, but at least they have routing and they've dealt with it on a Cisco environment. Let's look for three, four other keywords. Cisco CCNA, which is good. And they're looking for experience with wireless and security products. So when I'm basically highlighting to say keywords are very important, this is what I'm referencing to, to say in your resume, there must be a correlation between the job that you're applying for and what is contained in your CV. This basically shows that you understand the role in question. But if I'm a, if I am a recruiter and I'm looking at your CV and I can see that you have done routing or you got routing experience, I can tick a box that you meet the criteria. If you tell me about VLANs and 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 layer two switching, spanning tree. I can tick a box and say, okay, the candidate understands what we're looking for in this particular role. So it is important that your CV should contain some of the keywords that are included in the job description. Quick resume is the best site that I've seen on the market in as much as CVs are concerned. And this is basically my, my favorite site. So let us see how they define and describe their CVs. And I'm just looking at one for a help desk technician. The headline, highly qualified IP, IT help desk technician with experience in the industry, creative problem solving and getting exposure on multiple projects and the collaborative environment which the company prides itself. What are my skills? Customer service, multitasking, computer, inventory management, initiative, working under pressure and teamwork. Now, let's just start by breaking down that part. This person has got an experience dealing with customers. They've got the ability to multitask. They have inventory management experience and they can work under pressure. And if we are looking for someone who's got that skill set, all of a sudden, I'm going to get excited because I've got someone who is basically defined in a short space of time, in less than 10 seconds, I'm starting to build a picture of what they're capable of. Let's go to their description of their day-to-day -day task. They create new users in Active Directory and email in exchange, which is a fantastic skill set. Most of the help desk roles are looking for someone who can create email accounts, reset passwords, and you know create Active Directory users. So by giving that in the description, tick number one, a flag goes in my mind. Okay, they are good at one, two, three, four. Number two, they can add new users and reset passwords. Fantastic. Set up VPN connections and remote desktop for user laptops, including Mac, set up exchange email on iPhone and Android phones and update those devices when necessary. Within 20 seconds of just looking at the CV, all of a sudden, we are starting to form a picture of what this candidate is capable of. Experience, they got five to seven years experience. And these are kind of the hallmarks of a good CV 
And if your CV is not being able to explain what you can do or what you've done on a day-to-day basis, please try and replicate and make it as close as the one on the screen. Now, I'm just going to look at a a network, junior network engineer position, just so that we've got variety for people who are in the networking industry. I'm going to be putting the, the link to the website in the description below. Right. So junior network engineer, two years experience in network design, implementations and troubleshooting in the areas of routing and switching. I've got experience in providing network support, installation and analysis of a broad range of LAN, WAN, MAN communications. Now, if I stop the routing and switching keyword, troubleshooting keyword, implementation keyword, LAN, WAN. If you remember the other job that we we're looking at earlier on, they were looking for LAN, they were looking for WAN. So all of a sudden, this CV contains that key information. All right, let's go ahead. I, I want to highlight something that is very specific that the person tackles next. Expertise in installing, configuring, and troubleshooting of Cisco routers. And then they specify the models of the routers. Now, this is very key because... If I'm reading this as a recruiter, I can then marry what is in your CV versus what equipment do we have in our organization. All of a sudden, you're going to be the right candidate because you have dealt with the model that we're already dealing with. And this person then goes and specifies the model on the routing side and also the model on the switching side. And from a recruitment perspective, and I'm I'm now talking technical, when I'm reading such a CV, I have a full understanding of what someone is capable of doing. And this is a key quality. If you are in an if you are in the networking industry, by all means possible, try and include some model of the infrastructure that you've dealt with, whether you've dealt with it in a corporate environment or you've dealt with it in a lab environment. All right, so what are the skills? Troubleshooting BGP and OSPF. That's another green flag. I want to hear more about it. OSPF, I want to hear more about it. I haven't even gone into the description, but just the objective and the skills have kind of given me a picture of what this person is capable of. We're trying to build a picture in our mind. Let's go through the description. Responsible for IP routing. Remember the action words. Responsible for IP routing, which is BGP, OSPF, static routes, and switching using spanning tree, VTP, and VLAN. Man, the moment I see that, I'm smiling, right? And even if you're sitting across the table in an interview, all of a sudden, you're giving me ammunition of what I can ask you. So I can then say, okay, tell me about STP. And all of a sudden, it gives you an opportunity for you to shine and showcase to what extent you've dealt with spanning tree. And I'm just going to close off. Um, probably just want to find something that can, maybe two points, right? Upgraded iOS on various Cisco routers, which is 3945, 2911. 3750, 4500, and 6500. Now, these are very key and very important because your 4500s and your 6500s are more like your core switches. So if you've upgraded a 6500, it tells me the caliber of person that you are and what you are capable of. And this is what I would expect to find in your CV. If you're not putting this information, then you're doing yourself a disservice because no one is going to know what is it that you're basically capable of. So in closing, what are we saying? Or what am I saying? You need to change your CV and make sure that your CV looks as close as possible as some of the templates that we've basically gone through. And I'm not saying it should be identical. Obviously, it should contain information that you've dealt with, information that you're comfortable with, or technology that you're comfortable with. But from a formatting standpoint, it should pass the 30-second test when someone reads it, in 30 seconds, they should be able to formulate a picture of who you are, what technologies you know, and what you're capable of. If it's going to take someone more than 30 seconds, it means that your CV is not as clear as you might want it to be. So let me know how you go when you change your CV to match the template. If there's any improvement in as much as jobs availability on the market, are recruiters responding to you more? Are you getting more interviews? Because I feel personally that if your CV looks like the templates in question, there is no reason why an employer should not give you a call. So I'll be waiting for your feedback. And you tell me how the template has basically changed your opportunities. And if you want to see my latest video, it's going to be somewhere on the screen.